Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back for another episode of Empowering Intuitives Talk Show. I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Michelle Walker, and tonight we are going to talk a little bit about, we're continuing to figure out ways to empower us to live our best lives, right? And everything that's going on in the world right now is such a vital time that we find some empowering ways to heal ourselves and to help us stay in our center. And so we're going to talk a little bit about something that I love and is color therapy. And so hmm, if none of you know what this is. This is going to be a great show. And even if you do, you may learn something new about color therapy. So, you know, we are energetic beings and those of you that have practiced Reiki or have done any kind of energy work, you've learned about the chakras, the energy centers of the body. And I have those right up here for you, okay? And we talk about these centers because they really affect us body, mind, and spirit. And that is where my comfort zone is. That's where I work is body, mind, and spirit connections. So let's talk about the chakras a little bit. So they're like these energy centers. The Sanskrit word is actually wheel. So it's a wheel or an energy center. And you have them, there's a lot more than seven, but we'll talk about the most common seven. And so we have ones at the crown, okay? And that's associated with the violet color. I mean, you can't really see those back there. I have something here, if that's a little bit more helpful for you. Um, so like if we talk about the crown, right? So this is up here. This is the purple. This is our connection to our higher selves and the divine. We talk about the third eye. Any of you that are following intuitive people, they always talk about the third eye. This is your seat of your intuition, right? This was your pineal gland is located back down in there. So when we look at these energy centers, they're also focused on systems in the body and our emotions and uh, our spiritual spiritual connection and different aspects of ourselves are all connected to each one of these chakras. Then we talk about the throat chakra and that's the blue right there, right? Then you get into the heart chakra, my color green that I'm wearing, but also that color is, is pink or rose quartz, right? And then you move into the yellow, which is your solar plexus, move down to sacral and your root chakra. And so, you know, when we talk about each one of those, they're associated with colors and they have positive aspects and negative aspects. And let's just think about this for a second. If your crown chakra, this is your connection with your higher self. This is your connection with the divine. You're always connected, but it's about your perception of that. And it's about when you feel that connection and that chakra is open and functioning well, everything's groovy. But when that chakra is small and you can feel confusion, disconnected, um, depression, you can have a lot of emotional things that are going on that can happen there. Um, people with Alzheimer's, there's a definite um, issue with that chakra. Then when you move down into your intuition, right? And this is where you have peace of mind, wisdom, your intuition. People that have a negative aspect of this, you can get headaches. You have eye issues. It can give you fear issues. And that's that color indigo. And the crown chakra is the violet. So as you move to the throat or the blue, this is where you have a connection, your expression. This is your self-expression, is your spiritual connection to that. But it's also about communication. This is also where your thyroid is. And so people that have thyroid issues certainly have an issue going on in the throat chakra. But when it's functioning optimally, you have good communication. You have a good expression of yourself. You have creative expression. When it's not functioning properly, you can have lack of discernment. You can have issues communicating, right? So think about these things. As I'm talking about this, think about yourself. Think about the people that you love. And think about, you know, we these wheels, they always uh, are like everything else. They're fluid. They, they're energy centers. So they're always moving. So they can be big. They can be small. Um, and it's always about realigning, readjusting 
those to find harmony, aren't we always trying to find harmony in our bodies? So then when you get to the, the heart, that is about unconditional love, right? And it is also about accepting yourself, truly having oneness with yourself and with life. And when that is upset, you can have um, emotional instability. And this is why I wear green tonight, right? How much emotional instability is going on in the world right now? How much um, is, is going on and affecting where they may have some despair, the lack of love with all of the tensions and things that are happening, right? Um, then you're to the solar plexus, that yellow center that is like on the abdomen. And that's your personal power. That is um, where you have self-control. That's also part energy center. So if you have that not functioning optimally, you can have issues focusing, you can have anger, you can have hate. Mm, how many of these things are all out of alignment right now? If you look at the world chakras, <laughs> um, so many things that can be going on. Then you have your sacral plexus, this is in the lower abdomen. And this is when it's functioning optimally, it, you have a balance in your um, sexual relations you have this is also about giving and receiving how many people have come in here to learn lessons around that but it's also about tolerance how many people have no tolerance i don't know about you but since the pandemic so many people have zero tolerance for other people it's very interesting but when that is um um not functioning optimally of course you you have sexual issues you have a lack of tolerance there can be like addictive behaviors and things like that going on as well and then the red red chakra this is um about stability and security and courage and your health and um, mastering your physical body hmm <laughs> All of these things we're working on, right? And then when that's not optimally functioning, there's a lot of insecurity. You don't feel supported, um, uh, instability. And a lot of people tend to be me, 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 self-focused, right? So that's just the overall chakra system, if you will. And remember, colors are very powerful in our lives. And we already learned a little bit about the chakras. So we know our bodies are always changing and we are sensitive to our environments. We're sensitive to everything that we eat, everything that we drink, everything that we wear. We are consuming everything with all of our senses 24 hours a day. So what is color therapy and how can that be helpful? So it's a very holistic, non-invasive approach to helping you balance your own energies. And remember, every... Color is a, just a different wavelength, a spectrum of light, and it has its own energies. And we already said how that connects with the different chakras in the body. And, you know, colors rebalance these chakras. And they are, if you weren't aware, they're absorbed by our eyes, our skin, our aura field. So anybody that reads auras picks up colors. And they have a significance when you read them in the aura. And they have effect on your entire body. Color therapy is very powerful for relaxation and overall well-being, you know. So again, it's always about trying to get back into um, balance, homeostasis is the best way to explain that. So, you know, think about this. Even as babies we are seeing black and white then we develop our colors more prominent as we get a little bit further along but we are very much sensory programmed and little tiny children what's the first thing that they learn colors right it's very easy to pick up the colors so as we grow we attach our feelings memories um, and meanings to these colors, and we store that in our subconscious mind. And we, we can build up prejudices. We kind of have a, a linear thinking then, you know, based on our life experiences. So let's think about this. When you think of um, pale pink, what does that make you think of, right? 
babies, right? Everybody celebrates pale pink when when there's a baby coming, but that that's really about femininity, right? And sensitivity and softness. Makes sense why that's a good color for a baby girl. Let's think about red. Power, right? <laughs> that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Power, willpower, masculinity. Whenever you wear color red, how does that make you feel? Right? Do you feel like you're in a powerful leadership role? Mm -hmm. What about green? A lot of people, and especially people that work with energy and are trained in Eastern medicines, we tend to see green as very healing, right? Um, but what about light blue? What do we think about that? Softness. Um, we usually think baby boy, calming, right? We choose these colors because they're calming and they're soft and they're comforting, right? When we see yellow, we tend to think more energy, more vivacious. Um, when you look at these colors in the artwork field, they can have a little bit of a different meaning. And it can be individualized for each person. So, you know, like if you've ever had your R red on one of those machines, it will tell you what each color means. But yellow tends to be more of a teacher. It means um, uh, clear intellect, intellect and inner knowingness. And green tends to be healing. Um, just some examples. What do we think about when we see purple or violet? We think about our intuition and we think about our connection with the divine. So. Think about colors and how they make you feel. Look around your home. You know, I think one of the most interesting things is to ask somebody, what do you think your favorite color is? And a lot of people are like, I don't know. I don't know what my favorite color is. I love all colors, but they, for many reasons, right? Why do you love the colors that you do? Why do you choose what you choose in the rooms in your home? So think about it. We are being affected. And when you look at the colors and let's, put those up with the chakras, do you have a lot of blue in your home? Maybe that's to help balance, maybe you had issues in the past. So maybe you had a lot of situations where you weren't able to creatively express yourself or communicate your truth and really speak your mind. Now, how many times has that happened in lives? Mine. And so that's something that you have to work out. So if you have a lot of blue, um, you may be helping offset that. Remember the throat chakra. If you didn't, let's say, let's use an example, small child, you didn't get to communicate freely. Then maybe moving into adulthood, you tended to find situations or relationships or partners that stifled your creativity or really didn't want to hear what you had to say. So there you're, you're stifling those things, but the spiritual aspect of this is about self-expression. So then you can tend to stifle your own growth, if you will. And then once you shift and get out of that situation, now you're really trying to keep that open and not repeat, right? So goes our journey here on planet Earth. So you can use these colors to help facilitate that. So you can use colors in how many ways? One of my favorite is, since we're doing green, I like, have colored glasses that meet all the chakras. So I like to drink out of different colors. How many times have you gone to a doctor and they say, eat your green vegetables. You need to do more greens. They're healthy. Of course they are. Let's think about the organs that are associated with the heart. You have the heart with the heart chakra. You have the heart. You have the thymus, which is responsible for your immunity. You have the lungs, which is responsible for your breathing. You have the heart, which is responsible for your circulation. I mean, you got some big players going on in that heart chakra. So surrounding yourself with a lot of green, wearing green, eating your greens really does help balance out that chakra that ultimately affects everything else. So if you have any heart disease, circulation issues, you have breathing issues, you have immunity issues, guess what you need to be working with? That heart, that heart chakra. So you can use it by eating the colors, drinking the colors, wearing the colors, um, you know, you can use crystals, you can use, there's so many things that you can use. So for the heart chakra, it's also pink instead of green. So 
uh, rose quartz. You can use the green malachite. There's so many crystals that you can um, carry with you, keep around you where you spend a lot of time. And all of those have a vibration and that all helps support the chakras. You clear quartz kind of helps balance them all. <laughs> But I will warn you about it. It's an amplifier. So uh, you got to be careful with that because if you have a lot of intense negativity, that's not the one that you want to play with because then you just can amplify that a little bit. So just be cautious with the clear quartz when you're trying to work on just one particular chakra at a time. But there are a lot of different ones. And if you don't know what they are, go to your crystal shop and tell them, hey, I want some colors to help. I want some uh, crystals to help with my chakras and they'll know exactly what you're talking about. Um, so the other thing that you can do is learn a little bit more. I love having my resources. Um, this book in particular, Energy Medicine, I absolutely love this by Donna Eden. It's one of the best books that I have ever read on energy medicine and it will help you learn a little bit more about that. Play a couple little tricks with yourself. When you wake up in the morning, ask yourself, what should I wear today? And see, because that's a clue. Pay attention to what your intuition is guiding you towards. If they're guiding you towards a certain color to wear, that's a clue about maybe something's going on in that area that you're trying to help offset. If you have certain cravings for certain foods, you're drawn to certain things, pay attention to that. The other thing with the heart chakra is being outside in nature, how much green is in nature, right? So use the elements around you. And if you had a negative association with that color, so let's say, let's go back to that example earlier. If you blue makes you think that you can't, Maybe your bedroom as a child was blue and you don't feel blue is calming because maybe you had a really uh, troublesome childhood and you couldn't speak your truth and, and you know maybe some trauma happened around that color. You can change that memory and work on that to make that more of a positive color for you. So that, because we're always seeing it, whether you're conscious of it or not. So if you're associating a negative aspect to a color and that color happens to be frequent in your environment. Maybe it's in your workplace. Maybe it's um, your children or your other people are wearing those colors. Um, you could inadvertently have a negative aspect based on colors and it could be bringing up some emotional things that are still lingering around. So think about it. Think about it. Um, so if you do have that, where you have a, a, a negative association with the color, then work on making that a positive for yourself. So wear that color, eat that color, um, maybe have that color in your bath, you know, you get some bath bombs or whatever. There's so many ways to do it. Have fun with this one. I love having fun with color. Maybe you want to paint. Maybe you're an artist and you want to focus on certain colors that way. Maybe um, you can find a creative way to use the colors in your life. You know, I love for color therapy doing to paint. Um, that's, a, that's a fantastic thing for multiple reasons. It's self-expression. You know, all of these chakras and the things that are going on kind of overlap. So. I would also recommend some meditations and there is a meditation by um, Stephen Coe. He is um, on Facebook doing meditations every day. His master Chokok Sui and Pranic Healing. I think their meditation on twin hearts is so powerful and absolutely healing for you and for other people. So I'm gonna do a little blurb. Instead of taking a color tonight, what I wanna do is just a quick little meditation with some color and see how you feel after, okay? So I want you to kind of just sit in your seat. Let's take a couple deep breaths in through your nose and let's just exhale that out. And then just take some, do that a couple more times. And hold it and then exhale. What I'd like you to do is picture your body as an empty vase. 
and just watch that transform. There's nothing inside, just an empty shell of a body. And I want you to picture and imagine a beautiful ball of violet above your head. And I want you to picture and imagine that to be slowly poured down through the inside, coming down through your crown, down through your head, and picture that beautiful purple color going around your brain, slowly coming down through the eyes, down the face. Picture it just flowing on the inside, coming down your arms, down your chest, down your back, and let it just continue down your body. It's coming down through your abdomen, down through your hips, down through your legs, and out the sole of your feet, and watch that beautiful violet light go down into the core of the earth. And as it continues to pour through you, all of your stress, your worry, let it just wash it all away. Let it just cleanse and clean everything out of you. And watch it just go to the core of the earth and be transmuted back into beautiful light. Now I'd like you to picture a beautiful green, vibrant color, emerald green. And we have this ball above your head. And we're going to allow that to be poured down over you on the inside. And just let it clear and heal anything that needs healing as it moves through your brain and down through your eyes and just let it come down through your whole body slowly moving down healing anything and everything that needs healed down your arms down your abdomen down your back down the hips down the legs and down your feet to the core of mother earth just breathe that beautiful green healing color and let it just feel what that feels like. Now we ask the divine to pour down beautiful white light straight from the divine, pour down through you on the inside in the same way. And this light is connecting you to your higher self as it moves down from the heavens, down through your body, and it connects the heavens to the core of Mother Earth. And it comes out and surrounds you in a beautiful column of white divine light. And just breathe that in and how amazing that feels in your physical body and your emotional body and your energy bodies. Just breathe it in. Feel the centeredness and the calmness. Now we're going to take and we're going to create a little ball from this beautiful divine energy. And we're just going to send that beautiful divine energy to the earth. And we're going to just shine and surround the earth. Every being, every animal, and just surround them in healing divine light. We pray that they feel calm and centered. They find comfort and love, security, 
stability, stability and they feel completely enveloped in that beautiful divine light. And just breathe and just exhale, continuing to send that beautiful light to the earth. And we want to thank the divine. We want to thank all that assisted in that healing for us all. And we'll slowly just move your fingers and toes. And you can open your eyes. How does that feel? See how powerful color can be in healing you, centering you and balancing you and calming and finding peace. So if you enjoyed that meditation, I highly recommend doing um, the Twin Heart Meditation with Stephen Coe. And it's much more in depth, it's a lot longer, but that's just a little snippet of how color can really help heal you can put that in colors in different parts of the body to send love and light and healing. I hope that you found this very helpful and play with this and have some fun with it because you really are very powerful beings and the tools that you can gain to help yourself and help others are numerous. Color therapy is one of those. So have fun with it. I hope that you guys have an awesome week and I'll see you guys back here next week. Namaste.